Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Eric discovers a smoking gun as Sloane continues to lie about her financial problems. In the square, Nicole returns Holly's telephone now that she's back in school. She simply trusts she can trust her. Holly's companion Sophia shows up to do schoolwork over lattes before school. Tate gets to work right away when their server is nowhere to be found in the pub. Since the cook phoned and debilitated and Roman is occupied in the kitchen, Tate will remain and help prior to going to class. He gives Brady a scone for Rachel and sends his father on his way. As Tate cleans the bar, Holly and Sophia enter. Holly and Tate share a longing gaze. He gives the young ladies menus as they find a spot at a table. Holly watchfully palms the post-it note in her menu. Tate moons over her while Holly chills out. At the Demera Chateau, a pompous EJ expects the board casting a ballot him in as the new chief. Kristen humors him prior to raising EJ allowing Stefan to leave jail. She concludes that he and their brother are playing the long game. EJ plays his cards near the vest and leaves for work. Kristen initiates an email to Mr. Shin, but then decides to write it down instead. Rachel has to leave early for an art class, so Brady comes to pick her up from school. Brady's irritation increments upon seconds ago learning Rachel is being guided for math. Kristen keeps on provoking Brady by letting him know how close Alex and Rachel are. In the square, EJ meets up with Nicole. He discusses his bustling day at DMARA and as DA. The fact that he has two jobs while she only has one makes Nicole feel embarrassed. She gives his proposal to work at Demera, however she has thoughts on what she might want to do. Nicole returns home as Eric is going to leave the chateau. Before Nicole expresses her hope that they will one day become friends again, they engage in awkward small talk. Brady asks, how about now? How about every time? After what Holly did to him and Tate, Nicole is thrilled to hear that. Brady knows Holly's simply a youngster, and children commit errors. It'll be all right. Nicole trusts so. Alex is relaxed at home when Teresa massages him. They incline right up front, yet Teresa eases off to go to the rec center. He goes to get a shower after telling her that she is very good at massages. She smiles at herself and laughs. Sloane meets EJ while pushing Jude's stroller in the square. She inquires as to why he offered Stefan a generous arrangement only to undermine it with the judge. He expresses what is happening is nothing she should be worrying about. She would do well to keep that in mind. He leaves. She yells, little does he know, Jude. He doesn't know much. Eric discovers a notice that was late while going through the mail at home. When he opens the bill, the Salem in charges him on a daily basis. What in the world is happening? In their family room, Eric tells Sloane their monetary numbers aren't adding up. He realizes she controlled it before to pacify him, yet there's huge load of cash not represented. He is concerned that she is concealing an addiction, drugs, gambling, or shopping, and pleads with her to allow him to assist her. She demands she's not a fiend. He beseeches her to let him know continuing then, at that point. She laments the fact that he pretends to want to work when all he does is stay at home with the child. Eric continues to doubt her. He mocks her for being a martyr when she rants about taking on all of the financial responsibility. She leaves to take Jude for a walk after being offended. Teresa complains at their apartment that corporate America is probably not for her. Teresa considers starting a food and fashion blog when Alex asks what she wants to do next. She then specifies Maggie and Constantine's commitment, which shocks Alex. He can't stomach the prospect of Constantine getting his hands on his dad's cash. Alex can't believe Maggie is marrying a con man, so Teresa tries to defend Constantine. While Holly concentrates on her homework at the pub, Sophia marvels at Tate's snack. Tate works at a table nearby when Sophia gets up to use the bathroom. Holly explains that because Sophia tells her mother everything, she hasn't told Sophia about them. To avoid the parental units, they plan to interface on pay-as-you-go phones. Holly radiates. 
she is overjoyed to see him. He responds, same, before returning to work. Sophia asks Holly if Tate would want to go to prom when she returns to the table. She asks Holly if she is completely over him. Holly lies that she was never into him in any case. Tate pursues them with Holly's abandoned notebook as they leave for school. Sophia admires him as he approaches them in the park, where he and Holly engage in silly grins. Wendy gave Tripp a big hug and told him how much she appreciated his gesture. He continued, You mean the world to me. With a kiss, they made their new plans official. Stefan welcomed Rafe, who was situated at the bistro. Rafe confirmed that he was awaiting his lunch date during a heated exchange. At the point when Stefan got some information about tidbits, Rafe answered with a grin that he'd have bread and water, a similar dinner you would eat in a correctional facility. Rafe was referred to by Stefan as a valued customer despite his reluctance. Keep your nose clean, or I'll be ready for you, Rafe warned his brother-in-law. Ava expressed her determination to locate new housing when she met with Harris in Horton Town Square. She was satisfied after Harris illuminated her about his arrangement with Roman. Harris anticipated being Ava's flatmate with benefits, however they expected to zero in on their next pressing business, tracking down Clyde's dark book. Before deciding to go to the restaurant as customers, they debated various options, including breaking into the bistro. They concurred that everyone would secretively look through the eatery while they were there, since Ava realized the design well. At the bistro, Ava and Harris welcomed a shop Rafe, who thought the eatery was the last spot the couple would need to visit. Ava concocted a rationalization about the great food, however Jada's appearance cut Rafe's cross-examination off. Them four discussed Jada moving in with Rafe, and Ava urged Jada about Rafe having a delightful home and a defective oven. After Harris and Ava were situated at their table, Harris chastened Ava about inciting Jada. Ava said that she couldn't help herself because she thought Jada thought she wasn't a good match for him. Harris consoled Ava that she was his ideal match then took off to do a serene pursuit. Stefan moved toward the table, trying about Ava not having the option to remain away. Stefan's crab cakes were dry, Ava countered. Ava went on her own search and came back a short while later to tell Harris that she had also not found anything. After Harris reminded her that Stefan had nearly killed him twice, she quickly retracted her suggestion that they include Stefan in their plan. At the point when they returned to the square, actually with nothing, Harris kidded that he ought to act like a well-being examiner. Ava returned to breaking into the eatery. Harris swiftly responded, let's break in, when Ava asked if breaking and entering would be worse than Clyde's wrath. Rafe and Jada talked about the strange things that had happened, like the odd couple Ava and Harris frequenting the bistro and Stefan constantly staring at them. Jada and Rafe both felt sure Stefan must be breaking out in a cold sweat under his fine shirt in the wake of having three police come by. Jada turned the discussion to more joyful news and informed Rafe regarding the legal documents. Both were empowered by the turn of events, yet Rafe considered what had changed with Everett. Jada asserted, who the hell cares, as long as I get that creep out of my life. In his room, Everett got the legal documents he had thrown onto the floor in the wake of having thought about them over before. He addressed a thump at the entryway and found Rafe and Jada, who needed the marked papers. With a presumptuous grin, Everett affirmed he had them. At the point when Rafe irritably requested that he give Jada the papers, Everett kept up the weird grin and said he was going to get them now. He picked up the papers and returned to the room with a little swagger before giving them to Jada. Jada examined the documents and confirmed Everett's use of Bobby's signature. She said she would record them right. Or whatever you're going by these days, Rafe corrected Jada when he thanked Everett for signing the papers. Everett saw them off, and his demeanor changed somewhat after he pulled up a photograph on his telephone of Bobby and Jada. He shook his head as he looked at the picture.